Hello and welcome to the second episode in the Samantha Smith series uh, and the mystery of Bar Harbor Flight 1808. This uh, episode is going to be titled Why Samantha? A Dream and Synchronicity. And I thought I'd start this video and share this video and, and have a video that talks about uh, why I became interested in Samantha Smith because that's a, a question that's asked a lot. When I bring this up, uh, people are curious as to to why I'm researching about Samantha, why I care about Samantha, how I got started with it, and I figured I'd, I'd do a video about that before getting into all of the, uh, the information that I've uncovered. Um, why Samantha? It, it's a good question because most people I run into don't really remember her. Uh, they don't really know who she was. There are a few here and there who, who do remember who she was, but most um, are unfamiliar with her. And those who do know something about her, um, a lot of those don't really realize how important she actually was and, and how influential she was. And uh, I think that's something that, that, that needs to be said and something that needs to be told to people. And uh, so... It's a good question, and I figured I'd start the video with that. And uh, the, how I became interested in Samantha started completely uh, just coincidentally. I woke up uh, on my birthday, actually, August 27th, and uh, I went downstairs to read the paper. I normally read the sports section. Uh, I was a huge Yankees fan following them that summer. You know, it was almost the beginning of the school year, so it was winding down a little bit. But uh, I usually grab the sports section, so I asked my mother, who was all, already sitting at the table, if I could have the sports section, and she was reading it. So on that morning, I decided to take a look at the front page of the paper, and on the front page was this headline, the Peace Envoy, Samantha Dies in Crash. And uh, it piqued my, my curiosity, and I began reading the article, and uh, it, it sounded incredibly tragic. Uh, it made me want to know more about who Samantha was and and how I hadn't really heard about her before. So I asked my mother if she had ever heard of, of Samantha. And she hadn't, but she had already read the headline and remarked about how sad it was. So when she was finished with the sports section, she offered it to me and, and I wanted nothing to do with it. And I, I moved into an article that was on in the middle of the the paper uh, Samantha smile charm Soviets and this was basically talked about all of uh, her life who she was and and what she had done talking about going to the Soviet Union uh, you can see her there with her with her parents Jane and Arthur in the one picture and how she eventually got onto this television show Lime Street which is in the picture below which uh, it was probably one of the last pictures ever taken of her with Robert Wagner and Maya Bruton. And she was playing uh, Wagner's daughter in the series named uh, Elizabeth Culver, her, his oldest daughter. So by the time I got through this article, uh, I, I was almost in tears. I really was. And it really affected me. And uh, probably, you know, probably it affected a lot of people, I'm sure. And a lot of people had the same reaction to it. But it felt like that I that I had lost a, a family member almost. It was just a weird feeling. Uh, it really, really hit me hard. And uh, by the time I was done with it, uh, I was so moved that uh, I, I pretty much dropped everything that was going on in my life at that point and uh, just focused on learning more about who Samantha was because she seemed so incredibly uh, amazing. Yeah. So I moved on to... Uh, um, looking trying to find as much information as I could about Samantha I mean back then you didn't have Wikipedia so really what I had to do was go to the, the grocery store looking at all the tab tabloids uh, magazine articles one magazine that I found that I still have to this day was was the people magazine that came out with her on the cover and uh, that was a great article uh, talked a, a lot about her life and and talked to to Wagner about her and her upcoming show Lime Street. So it really got me interested in in, in the show. And the show was supposed to start on September 21st. 
they were going to show the first episode. So um, I prepared to watch that. And uh, this is a picture of the cast. We've got Samantha. There's She was playing Elizabeth. And then Robert Wagner was Grayson Culver. He was an insurance uh, investigator for a place called Lime Street, which was a play on Lloyd's of London. And there's Maya Bruton, who was the younger daughter. And then Lou Ayers was uh, Ro Robert Wagner's father in the show. Um, so so on, on the 21st, I was uh, I was at this place, and, and this is pretty funny. I was trying to find uh, a picture of the da Dairy Queen in the town where I grew up. And this is the only photo that I could find when they were tearing it down. But that used to be a Dairy Queen. And I was hanging out at the Dairy Queen. And uh, my, my buddy Jeff and his family actually owned the place. And it was getting late, closing time, and uh, he, he asked me if I wanted to go to a party that night. And I said, uh, no thanks, I'm going to go watch the uh, first episode of Lime Street. And the look he gave me was hilarious. Uh, he looked at me like I had three heads. It was, it was pretty funny. But uh, I declined. Um, he tried to understand as much as he could. But uh, So I hopped on my 10-speed. Uh, my which looked very similar to this. I got found a picture of it. it's a pook. It was a blue pook just like this, but the tires were about twice the size. And I used to take this thing off roads. We lived by a, a state park with a lot of trails, and I actually used to ride it on the trails uh, before mountain biking and all that stuff. But uh, so so I got on this bike and rode home as quick as I could and prepared myself to watch the first episode of Lime Street. I think the uh, the audience the audience uh, for the show was was going to be huge, uh, especially because of Samantha knowing that she was going to be on the show, and there were, there were a lot of people who were anticipating seeing her, and who were were very much in the same boat, uh, being affected by her death. Uh, as much as Robert Wagner was in the show, I think it was it was more about Samantha, and I think people were really tuning in. Um, to watch Samantha in the show. And as I sat down and turned the show on uh, and the opening scenes came on, it was, to say the least, a little bit, um, I guess the word would be shocking, <laughs> would be the word. Um, I, I'm going to actually play the beginning of the episode here for you, and you'll see what I mean uh, by this. Let's see, we'll bring that up, and we'll play. Here you go. So there you have it. That was the opening scene to the first episode of Lime Street with Samantha Smith. And you can imagine that I'm sure a lot of people were turned off by that that intro. And it's a I know it was filmed before 
uh, Samantha's plane crash, but still, I f it, you, you would think that they would have uh, at least tried to edit that a little bit out of there. Um, I know it's central to, to the plot of the show, but it was a little bit poor taste, I think. And I actually remember reading somewhere that, that Jane in the newspaper had said that she was really excited to watch the show because she hadn't seen all of the, the, the stuff that had been filmed with Samantha. So she was anticipating and looking forward to watching it. I can only imagine how she felt when she saw that as the opening scene. And not only was there one plane crash in, in the intro, in the, the, the pilot episode of, of Lime Street, there were, there were two. And <laughs> I'll show you the next scene here uh, with the second plane crash. This involved uh, Grayson Culver, Wagner, and his partner, John Standing. Uh, I forget his name off the top of my head, but... Uh, here they are in a little prop plane flying back, and <clears throat> let's see what happens here. I'll let him play that. Now, this is probably one of the most absurd scenes in all of television, too. Sorry, old chap. That's all the dad put on. Hand me that medicine over there. I'm not going without that. Of course. Fast things fast. Hey, Eddie, slide your seat back. Look, if I'm bothering you, why don't I just get under the... I mean, Eddie, I don't Eddie. believe this is happening. Now, uh, open the door. I'm going to crawl over you. I don't I'm believe it. I'm going to jump. I want you to count to one. And jump after. Jump after you will fall. Because uh, I'm gonna catch you. Oh, sure you are. Trust me. Do you know this is all really very upsetting? You would have to bloody marriage you. When no comes a rubbish like you're gonna catch me. Keep your chin up. Remember, I'm one Eddie. Or oh, kill him. Now, I know this is the 1980s, but the, the special effects are, are, are definitely lacking in this, in this show. It, this scene is pretty laughable. I think it, it just, uh, not only is it another plane crash, but it's just absolutely absurd uh, to have in the show in general. But, all right, sorry for interrupting. plane crash number two so um, there you have it that yeah the whole episode itself uh, was left a lot to be desired and uh, and including Samantha's character Elizabeth her her central theme to the plot of the show was that she was having her first period and uh, by the end of this episode I, you, you were just left with the feeling of what in the hell did you just watch <laughs> that, that was basically, I, I sat there thinking, that was uh, um, fairly anticlimactic at any rate. But, uh, you know, I, I hoped that maybe the uh, the shows would, would get better after that. And actually, the second episode was better. And it was probably one of Samantha's best episodes. Uh, and she definitely improved as the show went on. And... And I watched all five episodes up to uh, October 26th. I think it was the last one. And after that, uh, Samantha, she 
dropped off the radar for me. Um, I kind of moved moved back on, on with my life and um, got back into my life and also um, began playing music, uh, learned guitar and bass, and then I went to college a few years later uh, for history, which, which was something that I was always interested in, uh, especially being um, related to this guy here. This is uh, John Green who was one of the, the first settlers of Rhode Island, uh, specifically Providence and Warwick. He came over on a ship called James in the early 1600s and settled in Salem, had a little bit of uh, difficulty with the Puritan authority there, and eventually uh, went down to Rhode Island with Roger Williams and, and settled Providence and, and Warwick. So he's, uh, he's I'm direct descendant of John. Um, and his great grandson was Nathaniel Green. So I'm also related to Nathaniel Green. And so I was just very interested in, in the colonial period of, of, of uh, American history uh, coming from, from the lineage here. And uh, so I wound up getting my, my history degree and then moved on. I, I played, in, played in some bands, you know, tried to make a living at music as well. And eventually just settled down, had a family, and just Samantha just really, uh, she would come, come into my thoughts every once in a while. I would think about her and, you know, say, oh, yeah, you know, but, but nothing really serious or anything, any thought about it. Um, just that she was a huge part of my life for about two months there back in 1985. So, um settled on moved on with my life and I, I started getting into researching um uh about anything that i could uh specifically um things that seemed a little bit mysterious and one of the the avenues i i moved into was, was jeff buckley and uh and his life and death which is extremely interesting there's a really good book called dream brother uh, that that's really good. If if you like Jeff Buckley, it'd be a good book to read. But um, I really w was getting into Jeff Buckley and and also uh, the SST period of music. I don't know if, if many people know about that, but that was like an alternative scene that came out of uh, L.A. and California. It had some bands like Husker Du, The Minutemen, things like that. So I started researching SST as well and uh, D Boone's death and started getting into some interesting stuff about um, Black Flag especially and their family and their father who was actually it looked like he, I was getting in he, he might have been connected with the CIA I'm not sure but he wrote a book uh, all in Italian about the the comparison between CIA and KGB uh, some very interesting stuff so so there was some really uh, interesting things in SST but but all of a sudden in early 2017 2017 about three and a half years ago uh, I had a dream and I was with Samantha and I was young again I was a kid again and we were walking down a path uh, similar to this and I was just walking with her and just thinking how how awesome it was to be with her and just smiling and she kept having me follow her down the path and we approached the edge of, of some some brush and some woods and she wanted me to follow her into the the woods and I started getting a little bit of a concerned feeling about her in the dream and didn't see and she walked into the woods and, and disappeared and then I woke up and it was one of those dreams where I know most of you have probably had them before, where where you just have that feeling that you, that you can't shake after you have it for a number of days, and the feeling from the dream just just sits with you, and uh, it's it's hard to describe, you know. Um, it's hard hard feeling, but I, I know a lot of people um, have had that experience before, and it was just something I couldn't shake, and and you know, so eventually. I dropped what I was doing um, with the SST stuff and Jeff Buckley and started looking into Samantha's life again and um, just trying to find out, you know, 
maybe there there was a reason why I had the dream. I, I didn't know. But I thought, you know, I could I could revisit and see what maybe Jane had been up to after the death and what happened and things like that, you know, just so just out of curiosity. And uh, so I went to her uh, Wikipedia page first and started reading about, you know, Jane starting the Samantha Smith Foundation. There were a, a lot of uh, tributes to her. This is one of them that that uh, statue of her. It's in front of the uh, the main, the Augusta, the library in Augusta, I believe. Um, that's I, I did visit it actually, but I'll, I'll get to that later on. But um, they set this up there. Uh, Soviet Union had a number of tributes to her. They named stars after her, and diamonds and mountains, all kinds of things. Um, so I you, I saw firsthand how much of an effect she had, especially in the Soviet Union, but. Um, she had largely still been forgotten, though, um, for the most part. Um, and uh, let's see. So uh, let me see if I can find it. Okay, here we go. So here's uh, here's her her Wikipedia page, and this was the part that really piqued my interest um, when it talked about her death on here and. Right here it says, much speculation regarding the cause of the crash, cause of the accident, circulated afterwards. Accusations of foul play circulated widely in the Soviet Union. An investigation was undertaken in the United States, and the official report, which did not show evidence of foul play, was made public. Uh, then it goes on, stated in the report, uh, says the relatively steep flight path and attitude and speed uh, precluded the occupants from surviving the accident. Um, but then it also said the main point of the report was that it was a rainy night and the pilots operating the craft were inexperienced. Okay, so this did pique my interest um, because when I first had seen... Uh, the the news article talking about Samantha's death I don't remember anything about foul play any accusations about any of that stuff um, and even after the fact I don't remember any of it but uh, so so I decided to try to look into this myself and see what exactly they were talking about here and and what I found was that most of the uh, accusations were centering around this man Ronald Reagan uh, there, there was a lot of talk of that, most, mostly coming from the Soviet Union, obviously, but there were some rumblings in the United States as well. It was Reagan or the Central Intelligence Agency, the, the, normal, uh, the normal culprits that always get brought up when people are talking about foul play and, and suspicious, suspicious activity, things like that. But I also even saw something about the cast from Lime Street, actually, you know, being accused of, of being involved in foul play regarding the plane crash. So, um, so I, I was really interested at this point and, uh, I figured I w wanted to look into it more on my own and see what exactly was going on. And I know that the Wikipedia page talks about the NTSB report saying that foul play was, was, uh, excluded as a, as a possibility. And so um, I decided that I would go and read the, uh, the NTSB report myself. And it's about 78 pages. And I went through every sentence in this report. And nowhere in the report did it talk about uh, foul play. It, di it didn't say there was or there wasn't. It was never even brought up. Um, there are some interesting things that are brought up that are then just cast aside and not talked about. But according to the Wikipedia page, um, it said that it had um, excluded foul play. But the fact is, it's not even mentioned in the report. Um, it also says that the weather was, it talked about the weather being responsible, but the weather was above minimum thresholds. It was raining, but it wasn't bad enough to ground any flights at all in Maine. So that was also something that, that seemed a little odd to me. <clears throat> and then the report also talks about how experienced the pilot, the main pilot, the captain actually was. 
he was not in, inexperienced whatsoever. And the report talks about that. So all of these things in the Wikipedia page uh, absolutely piqued my interest even more in this as what they were talking about as being the causes of the plane crash were not accurate at all. <clears throat> so um, before going into any of the other stuff about Reagan and the CIA and that, uh, I decided to you know take a look at who was around Samantha around the time that she was on the plane and, and got on the plane and crashed. And the first person that I looked into was this man here, was uh, Robert Wagner. <clears throat> and I hadn't known much about Robert Wagner at all. Uh, I knew he was in the pilot with her. Um, and after that, I remember seeing him in the uh, Austin Power, Powers movies. Uh, he has that pretty funny scene where, where he breaks down and cries, uh, <laughs> which I always thought was a pretty funny scene. But other than that, I think I had known a little bit about Heart to Heart that he had been in that show. But I, I really didn't know anything about Robert Wagner. But after reading this book, which I recommend, even if you're not a Robert Wagner fan or if you don't like him or, or whatever, it, it's an excellent book because it's in his own words. This is his own memoir. And in it, after reading it, uh, the overall sense that I got from Robert Wagner was that he was a very, very narcissistic person, um, very much into into his own image himself, had a bit of a temper problem. Uh, there, you know, there's a few scenes. In, and, and also, I didn't realize that, you know, um, that he, actually I had I do remember vaguely about Natalie Wood dying. Um, I, I was really young when that happened. I think I was like 10. And uh, <clears throat> so I vaguely remembered that. Um, but I didn't realize that people were thinking that he actually had killed her. Um, the, but from reading this book, that was the first time that I had actually uh, uh, found out anything about that. And uh, and so he, he talks about that in his memoir, not a whole lot about it. And I was looking forward to seeing him talk about Samantha because I was thinking that he he must have been enamored with her like most people were. And when I got to the section about Samantha, uh, it was there was barely anything in this book about it. Uh, maybe two or three pages total, and two paragraphs of that were directed um, directly about Samantha. Uh, it was very underwhelming. Uh, so, so. After reading this book, I thought, okay, well, uh, you know, I'll look into the Natalie Wood stuff a little more, and you know, so I so I came across this book by Marty Ruley, and it's Goodbye Natalie, Goodbye Splendor, and and this is an excellent book that I highly recommend. Um, and she was actually a friend of the captain of the boat of of Wagner and Natalie's yacht, the Splendor. Uh, he was the caretaker. Uh, really, Wagner was the captain, but um, he was he was the one who who drove the boat and and took care of it and all of that. So uh, she was actually friends, great friends with, with with Dennis Deverne was his name, and he wound up coming out in the tabloids talking about uh, that he thought that that Robert Wagner had actually uh, had something to do with with Natalie Wood's death. And this book details that great, greatly. Uh, excellent book. Uh, I highly recommend it. Uh, I was actually hoping that maybe there would be even be some, some mention of Samantha Smith in this book when I actually started reading it. And to my surprise, uh, Marty actually does bring up Samantha in the book. And the section that she brings her up in is when Dennis Deverne finally decided to actually leave L.A. because he had been threatened. And the threat had actually come from, and the uh, the threat happened. Uh, it was, I'm guessing, uh, it, she didn't really say in the book when exactly the date was, but it, ha it was sometime after Samantha had died. And uh, Dennis was on the docks working on the Splendor, and a man came up to him and asked him if he knew who Samantha Smith was. And Dennis did not know who Samantha was. And the guy said, well, if you don't want to end up like Samantha Smith, you should leave 
LA it, 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 and something like that. I don't know. I don't remember exactly. I don't have the book in front of me, but it was to that effect. So Dennis was actually threatened by this person who basically said, don't, you don't want to end up like Samantha Smith. So I found, so I was in, completely blown away by that in this book. So I, I decided to actually contact Marty myself and email her and tell her what the stuff that I had been finding out about Samantha as well. And uh, that sparked a, a great relationship between me and Marty. And she has been incredibly helpful with this. And she, in fact, told me that she had put that in the book, hoping that somebody would pick up on it. And, uh, and I did. So uh, not to go into too much detail right now about it all, but um, I, I've had a great relationship with Marty. She's awesome. I highly recommend her book, and uh, and she's coming out with a new book soon too, which which I would also highly recommend. But at any rate, uh, this really started piquing my interest with with regarding Robert Wagner, and uh, as so, there you have it. <laughs> I'm not saying anything specifically regarding. Robert Wagner or any of these other things as I, I will get into all of this as, as I as I go on in these videos um, and uh, all of it is basically just information I'm not accusing anybody specifically but I will talk about all of the things that that, that lead to the possibilities of Reagan or CIA or, or Robert Wagner or somebody else, you know, um, there, it basically, I, I came to the conclusion that there was something sinister about this, this, uh, this plane crash. I, there absolutely is. And, uh, so that really is, is what led me, uh, I think it was, uh, last year around Samantha Smith day, which is the first Monday in June, to actually take a trip to Maine myself, just just to, to see all the stuff that I had been reading about, and uh, put myself in, in in actually in these places and, and get the feel and all of that. So I decided to take a trip up to um, up to Maine, and as I was driving up to to Augusta, which is where Samantha's statue is, and I wanted to go there, you know, to celebrate her her day. Um, I was driving up 95 up Maine and uh, there was a road sign up ahead that that said Augusta 27 miles and I thought oh that's odd you know because the, you know my birthday is August 27th and I thought well that, that's a pretty odd thing and then right after that sign was a 70 mile per, mile per hour sign and I was born in 1970 so on the sign it said Augusta 27 and right after it was 70 and I thought that that was pretty weird. Uh, it was a very uh, synchronistic uh, happening that uh, I thought maybe maybe I'm on to something here, you know, maybe that's a sign. But, you know, depends on, on, on how you feel about that kind of stuff. But I, I thought it was I thought it was pretty, pretty cool um, at any rate. So I, I went up and <clears throat> uh, I visited her statue. There were, there were some flowers there, but there was no uh, no celebration or anything. Um, I'm not sure what they do for her on her, on her day now in Maine, but there was nothing going on that day. Um, but uh, so, the, and then I, from Augusta, I took the, it was about a 15 minute ride over to where um, she grew up and her house in Manchester. And I grew, drove over there, drove by the house and you won't recognize it um, from, from the old video footage and pictures uh, from of her family sitting out in front of it it's completely different it's actually it, it, i think it was like a like a cape style uh originally and now it's definitely just a two two-story straight two-story uh colonial house and it's a different color all that uh so you wouldn't even recognize it but interesting right around the corner uh from from her house i thought this was pretty 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 cool there's this rock in a, a cemetery by a church uh, called the Devil's Footprint. And so I, I drove over there and I visited it. And uh, this is a picture of it. And the story of, of uh, the Devil's Footprint was uh, that somebody was um, somebody was um, was doing construction on Scribner Road, which is which is where the church is. And uh, he was involved in a, in a project and he came across uh, a large unmovable rock 
that was in the way of their construction work on the road. So uh, he basically said it was uh, impossible to move and said that he would sell his soul to the devil if the rock could be moved. That, that's apparently the legend. So the next day, the, the worker was nowhere to be found uh, and, and seemingly vanished into thin air. And the rock was gone as well. And ha- so construction could begin again. Uh, but on the rock were these two markings. And I think, can you see them here? There's, there's, it looks like two foot, there's two footprints here. Um, I don't know if you can see my cursor or not, but it looks like there's two foot footprints in it. Um, in the shape of a cloven hoof. Um, so the markings are said to have been placed by the devil himself and proof that the construction worker had indeed sold his soul in order to have the rock moved. And apparently there's all kinds of hauntings there now and things like that. But I thought this was interesting, you know, digressing, just a little segue here. But this this was literally right around the corner from, from where Samantha and her family lived in Manchester. So I did visit that as well. So after after uh, visiting her house in Maine and, and this in Manchester, I decided to drive over to where the plane crash happened in Auburn, Lewiston. And... Um, And as I was driving up to it, I just was getting a a weird feeling overall. Uh, It was just a a strange thing to to be visiting where the plane crash had happened. Um, Just an odd odd feeling. But um, so as I was driving up to the spot, uh, there there used to be a house there. The house wasn't there anymore. Uh, The house was gone. And uh, I actually have, I found this video of a plane actually landing at runway four at Auburn Lewiston. So I was gonna play this um, to take a look and you can see what it's like to, to land there. Um, let me see if I can get this up. So here you go, right, what he was flying over there was something called Christian Hill and they moved it. Okay, so now here, here you can see this is, this is Foster Road going through here, um, if you can see my cursor, okay. So this is the runway up here, um, and you can see that he it's very high here, he, and Christian Hill, he's flying right over, that's actually what the plane clipped on when it first crashed, so it was, it was really way too low, but uh, you can see here, the vantage point to the to the the runway from here and here's foster road and this is where it came up and right here is where i stopped and got out and as you can see there's a little path here so as you're walking down this path the plane crashes a ravine um up here i think this is where the ravine is was up this way it's either here or here i can't remember from from this vantage point but um the, the plane had actually crashed over here uh down in, in, into a Moosebrook Ravine off, off the Foster Road. But as you can see coming in here, you can see that it, it's very straight shot into the runway. Um, yeah, it was down in here. Right there is where the plane crashed. And uh, very basic uh, landing, not difficult. Um, even even in, at night and in rain, you could still see the runway pretty well. But anyway, I just wanted to show that quick. Um, so this is where things got a little interesting for me. And uh, this here is a ground shot of what I just showed you from up above. And this house right here, the plane actually flew over that house. Uh, I'm sure these trees weren't that tall back then, but this house isn't even there anymore. But the plane was over this way and flew over the house and crashed through the woods here. But as I got out of my car and I was walking down here and walking through here, I just started getting this overwhelming sensation of, uh, uh, it was hard to explain, but as I got closer and closer to the place where the plane had crashed and it crashed into some woods, just the the feeling of deja vu came over me uh, so sudden. And what I was thinking was that this was the place that Samantha had taken me to in in my dream. And it it was just an incredible incredible feeling of, of deja vu uh, I just hard to explain and 
it was knocked me back. It, it's it's even hard to talk about. It it really is. Um, and I just thought, you know, was she contacting me in my dream? You know, to 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 look into this because really at the end of the day if if this was foul play and it was sabotage i would think that she would she would want to know, you know people to know that and and that's kind of the feeling that i've gotten and i've felt ever since i had that dream in 2017 that all of this information has just come to me it just, it really has and uh, I, it almost feels like that there there's a purpose to all of this and there's a reason why I've been looking into this. And so that really uh, sums up why Samantha, for me, um, uh, I gave you the backstory to how I, how I uh, actually first found out about her up, up to this point. And uh, I really do believe that there was something sinister about the plane crash. Um, I know a lot of people out there believe the same thing. I know they do. I don't know if anybody's ever taken the time to really, really dig into it, though. And that is what I've been doing. And uh, and that's what I want to share with everybody in, in these subsequent videos. Uh, the things that I found out. how and, and, and the path that I took to find these things out. Because at the same time, uh, while researching this, I learned a lot more about just overall how things work in this world because Samantha was engrossed in a political struggle, a religious struggle, all of this. People can say that she wasn't she wasn't important, you know, but she was w way more important than people realize. And that's something I'm going to show uh, and that I, I will show. And she was an incredible person. And I know there's a lot of people out there that agree with me on this. And uh, I would love to hear from people, uh, anybody who has any thoughts on any of this, um, especially people from the Soviet Union, uh, which I don't have a lot of access to. Uh, but if anybody wants to contact me, leave comments. If I've gotten anything wrong in the videos if, uh, or in the subsequent videos, if, if, if you know anything, uh, feel free to contact me. I'm open to everything. And uh, comment on this video and like it and subscribe, please. And uh, and uh, I'll definitely be sharing more with, with everyone. But I uh, hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. And thanks a lot.